<laughs> All right. Uh, I was just commenting to Jill earlier that, uh, you know, with everybody that gets up here, I keep thinking, and now for something different. And this is just, this has been an amazing day. So I appreciate all the, the speakers that have presented before me, and I appreciate being here ready to present this kind of interesting experience that I was asked to uh, talk about. First, before I do that, of course, I have disclosures. I am a professor at Johns Hopkins University, but I also own a company called Fairman Studios. Illustrate Science is a registered trademark of that company. Hopkins is not endorsing me, and I have not received any funding from Hopkins to be here. My words are my own. So without further ado, I'm a medical illustrator, and ever since I was a little girl, I love science. I love nature, the wonders of the microscopic and the macroscopic, running to the forest. This is my daughter, actually. And then I also loved art. Um, I, I loved being able to create things. And, and of course, I always admired my teachers. And little did I know that I would be able to combine all three of those things to become a medical illustrator, right? But not only that, never in my wildest dreams did I ever want to be a business owner either. So I, you know, I'm going to tell you about this little adventure. So when you go to school, right, this is sort of the logical thought process. I'm going to go to school, I'm going to graduate, I'm going to get a job somewhere, and then I'm going to me, you know, I'm going to get some knowledge and experience, and then maybe I'll go back and teach others what I've been doing so that they can also continue in the journey like I have. And then when I'm done, I'll, you know, go out on my own and freelance. Well, that is just, you know, that's a great story, but it's also kind of boring, and that's not how life is, right? So my story's a little convoluted. It started out that way, but then shortly after my first position, 14 months later, I got laid off because of budget cuts. And so there were no jobs around at the time. I was in Boston, which is a great place to be pushed out of an airplane with a golden bear parachute. And so I started freelancing. I, I founded my own studio, Fairman Studios. And then six uh, arduous years later, I was asked to come back and teach, which I thought was a little too soon because I, I, I still felt young and fresh and I just still didn't know what I was doing. But I decided to go back. I always loved teaching, and I and I, you know, it was my my dream job. So I went back. But then there's this this point where you know you get married, you have a house, you have your first child, and then you get a brochure in the mail. This is my very bad story, by the way. So um, you get a brochure in the mail from the local um, one of the local universities, MICA, which is the Maryland Institute College of Art. In 2011, they founded this program called the Business of Art and Design. It's a, a master's program. And I'm looking at this brochure, and I'm looking at the curriculum, and I'm thinking to myself, my god, where was this brochure when I was starting my company? I sure could use it. I mean, we get business in school, and I teach business, but you just don't know what you're doing until you actually have to do it. And I was, you know, so one child, another child later, a couple years later, I'm hemming and hawing about that. I'm like, why should I go back to school? I already have a master's degree, and I've been doing business. So what, what am I, you know, but I kept going back to it, and I decided, you know what? My daughter was born. She was, you know, she was still alive. You know, she was well on her way to growing up. So I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. A little bit for them, a little bit for me. And so I decided to join the cohort, uh, uh, the 2016 cohort, keeping an open mind. So I went in thinking, you know, I, I'm a medical illustrator, I'm a one trick pony. Yeah, of course, I can sell medical illustration until the cows come home, but I didn't know anything else about other business ideas that I had in my head. I like to do jewelry, I had a couple little of my own pet projects on the side, and I, I really just wanted to fill the gaps in my knowledge, but I also knew that everything that I was going to learn, I was gonna be sharing with my students at Hopkins, I was gonna be sharing with the Association of Medical Illustrators, the Guild, here at Cybiz, you know, my colleagues, the world, whatever. So I joined this cohort, and it was amazing because this is business geared for artists, and um, you know these are my these are my classmates. So uh, a heavy metal band, um, a graphic designer, a sci artist, um, an events planner, interior uh, decorator, and a, a, a greeting card creator. Beautiful watercolors, by the way. And so, so I'm going to kind of take you on a journey of what this was like and what I, a, a few nuggets of things that I learned and, and then what that led to. So in residency one, um, 
so the, the, the program itself, is a, it's about an 18-month um, online program, but you also meet in person with your cohorts. And, and so at our first residency, we met together, and we were challenged with creating a business model that was pretty much a $5 business, your budget, $5, okay? How do you create artwork and sell it for $5? And if you've ever seen these um, cigarette machines, around, they're around the country, they're called Artimat. You can create a little piece of artwork that has to fit within a, a cigarette size package. And each one of those knobs is a different artist. You put $5 in and you get an original piece of artwork, right? And Artimat keeps um, $250 and the artist gets $250. So how do you, you know, and then there's like cost of goods. Like how do you make a profit? How is that even possible? But one of the things I realized was that basically what you're putting in the machine needs to be free, right? It needs to be made out of recycled materials or things you already have. And you can't even account for the cost of time. But it's not even about that. It's about not, it's not about making a profit off of Artemat. It's about getting your name out there and like maybe putting a coupon in there. And you know, so it's, you know, thinking forward. Don't think about the actual thing, but think about where it's gonna lead you to. The second thing um, that we did was branding. And this is a kind of funny story. So um, the first assignment, we were asked to think about what archetype we felt we belonged in. And I know that the Association of Medical Surgeons went through a rebranding process almost a decade ago. So um, if you don't know what an archetype is, a, a, Jungian, ar a Jungian archetype is named for Carl Jung. He came up with these archetypes. So you're basically trying to find your voice. And there's all these different voices, the artist, the ruler, the caregiver, all this kind of stuff. And you're kind of thinking about, <laughs> You know, what is your best self? Um, what is your higher purpose? That becomes your mission statement. What's the point? That's your uh, value proposition, all these different things. And um, all of us in class, we were going back and forth with, um, you know, what am I? What do, you know, so I had to answer a few questions. And it ended up, I think the AMI came up with sage as well. I think maybe even magician. But I'm somewhat of a sage, so I'm, I'm imparting knowledge, but I'm also an explorer. And this is just me, by the way. Other medical illustrators, scientific illustrators, everyone in this room is gonna have a different archetype. But this is just me. So then the second thing I was asked to do is come up with an icon. So pick one icon that symbolizes your product or service and bring that image of the icon to residency. So these are icons, right? Like, they look like icons, right? So this is hilarious. So <laughs> I, I started playing with this idea of nodes and the golden ratio and you know, a lot of us talk about art, science, and communication or teaching. So I'm playing with this idea and I come to class and everybody's talking about people and I'm like, oh, I brought like an icon. <laughs> I totally misunderstood the assignment. So I promptly put my little icon away. <laughs> And I said, oh, okay, an icon, like an I, like a person. Oh, okay, I got you. The, oh, easy, go back to your archetype, right? Knowledge, the sage, right? Leonardo da Vinci, Charles Darwin, Andreas Vesalius. And I bring this to class. <laughs> this is hilarious because my teacher's just like smacking his head. He's like, you mean to tell me that an old, dead man with a beard would represent you. I was like, no, the way you put it, there, that doesn't sound right at all. So he's like, let me put it to you this way. You know, at, all of us that are involved in science and visualization, we all have this common thread, right? Like, we think about Leonardo da Vinci all the time, but if you were to pick an individual, a character or a person, that would play your role of your story in a movie, who would it be? It wouldn't be Charles Darwin. Oh, okay, so Hermione Granger it is. <laughs> so, all right, moving on. <laughs> I also noticed there was a little common thread in a couple other talks um, about design thinking. And we had a, a workshop about design thinking, and this is basically this process of iterating. We all do this um, when we do scientific experiments, when we create illustrations that explain science. We're trying to problem solve. Whatever it is that we're doing, we're problem solving. So you're kind of, you're learning, you're coming back, you're iterating, and you're focusing more into the solution. So if you ever see a workshop for design thinking, 
I recommend everybody take one. It's great. Moving on, that was just the first residency, but we're going to kind of fast forward a little bit going into the fall. Um, we learned a lot of, about taxes, about you know business models and things like that. The only thing I want to show you at this point is the business model canvas. My students know all about this because I teach this. But if you're ever tasked with trying to create a business plan and you don't know where to start, this is a great visual. You can literally you know, blow it up on a screen and put post-it notes on it or print it out. But basically, these are all the components of how you might think about your business model. And this is a great book. Um, the other thing, um, so moving, moving forward, we, we, we're starting to get halfway the, through the program and we have our second residency. And that's when we're starting to think about what our thesis is going to be. Now again, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to focus my thesis on. I was thinking of things. Um, you know, ranging from jewelry to medical illustration to other things. But um, we started talking about marketing, and um, these are, you know, just three points that I'd like to make. These are, these are things that we run into all the time. So, you know, how much, how much should I charge? How do I negotiate projects? And um, how do I manage everything? There's um, different, different answers to each of these questions. And so these are just some of the things that I learned, and I um, talk about this with my students all the time. Um, I don't know if you all have heard of Elise Benin, but she's a really great marketing strategist coach, and she um, teaches a lot of these things. Um, people ask me, you know, do you have time to sleep? Somebody's just asking me that. You basically have to schedule all these things that you want to do or they'll never get done, and no, you don't have to do everything. So. Um, the other thing that we kind of went through was leadership, and, and so one of the assignments that we had was about networking, and it, it's a really hard thing to do networking, especially if you're really shy, but you, you, don't, you don't realize the network that you have. You think, you know, when you think about networking, you're thinking in sort of like a, this business sense, but you know a lot of people within your network um, in terms of um, the people you went to school with, the people that you work with now, in the future, um, family, friends, you never know who's really in your network. It's a, lot, it's a lot wider web than you think. And so you want to take advantage of that. Um, and then the other thing that we learned about, and these are things that you want to kind of impart if you're, if you're running a business, um, you want to impart some of these kind of key um, values in your employees and in your in, in your coworkers. So um, these were just a few of the exercises that I went through. But I learned a lot because it made me think. I had to, you know, again, this is sort of like you're thinking about your story and how you're going to project yourself through your business. So, um, and pardon me. I'm going to just grab my drink. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't see that. Um, so um, this is this is kind of interesting. So a couple other things that happen. Um, we were asked to think about what our inspiring spaces might look like. And no, my, my studio does not look like this. But we created these mood boards of you know what would be inspiring to us. And little did I know that a month later, my husband would come home and tell us, hey, guys, we're moving to a, you know, we're going to move to a new city. So um, this was really, <laughs> it ended up being very helpful in kind of thinking about um, spaces that, that can help inspire you to be productive. And even at Hopkins, we had to go through a remodel. So all these things just kind of happened all at once. It was kind of weird. Um, and then finally, um, you know, kind of putting things together as if, you know, if you were going to work with clients or with colleagues, you know, what kind of leadership would you impart um, in, in, in um, collaborations and in working together as teams. So, okay, so I'm gonna speed forward. And I finally decided, I realized what I wanted to do for thesis. And this is something I've been thinking about since 2002, but just never did anything about it. And that was, I had accumulated a lot of artwork over the years. And, um, and I decided that what I wanted to do was finally take a URL that I had for years, which was anatomicalillustration.com, I don't even use it anymore, and, um, and build a website that would allow people who have been asking me over and over for the same stuff over and over again to just be able to pr procure um, those um, 
assets without having to um, really, you know, have to sit and write out all the license agreements and make it somewhat automated. So I wanted to see if I can make this work. So, you know, if you if you've created medical illustration over the years, chances are you have a lot of different things that are pretty generic that, and a lot of people um, find of value. And so that's what I decided to do. Um, one of the things that I, that I ended up doing was I had applied for a, a graduate student research grant to see if I could get just a little bit of funding to support building a website. And what ended up happening was the grant got rejected because um, they thought that the site was already built and so they thought I was trying to get reimbursed for it. They totally misunderstood what I had tried to project, but that was a lesson learned. It was actually a very good um, thing to happen. So $493, no big deal. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get into like the second part of that in a little bit. But um, so essentially we, we're getting to the end and it turns out, this is really, Funny, I was on to something when I built those icons and I decided I know what I want to do. I want to build this site and I want to project this message to people that don't know what this is, that, but, they, but they need this stuff. So I came up with this, this is the, and this was the first iteration. Um, and essentially this is the website, this was the, the beta. You go there, you, you, know, you pick out what you want. It's almost like you know, the Getty of medical illustration, right? You go to PayPal. You pick out what you need, um, you pay for it, and but here's the magic that I was trying to figure out was how can I get it so that they have a license agreement in hand? Because that's something I usually have to write, and it spits it out for them, and it sends them this email, and they've you know they it says what they can use it for and everything. So there's that. Shortly after this, this was my thesis defense. We're sitting, we're having lunch. I have three minutes left, so I'm going to rush through this. Um, my, my director said, you need to apply for Upstart, which is this incubation program. So I said, okay, well first let me graduate. So I did that. <laughs> and then I went to Upstart. And Upstart is this program where any, gra any current student or graduate from those, those two years can apply for, a, 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 there's a pool of $100,000 of seed money for your business idea. So this is round one. There's about 30 different, um, different contestants, so to speak, different business models there. And behind, what you don't see there is this uh, auditorium. And you literally, you have two minutes. You get up on the stage, and there's judges, and you give your pitch. You give your elevator pitch. You have to tell people what you're doing in two minutes or less with no PowerPoint, nothing, right? And I was, I was terrified, of course. So, and I gave them little giveaways. You may have seen those out in the table. Hope somebody got them. Um, and I walked out and um, they, they judge on site and they, and they announce the winners at the end of the, of the, uh, of the evening. There's 30 people and eight, peop eight teams get chosen. And with every name they called, I was like, I'm going home, I'm going home, I'm going. They get to like the sixth person, the seventh person. I was the last person they named. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh my God, and now I'm really stuck, right? Because now I'm going into eight week incubation. And um, it was great because right afterwards, Ken Malone, he was one of the judges. He came up to me and he's like, we're gonna do some fun stuff together. So he became my mentor. And what he helped me do is take my 100 page thesis business plan and hone it down to the essence of 10 pages because that's what we had to submit for round two. And then um, essentially, you know, you, you have to talk about all the, you know, like your, your projections, your financial projections, how you're going to make it work and all this stuff. So then the eight of us, we, we went through a cohort together. Each week we met with our mentors and then um, uh, we also um, met with each other and, you know, bounced ideas off of each other. It was actually, you know, talk about friendly competition. It was great. And then we get to round two and I'm almost done. So this is perfect. Um, again, we had to set up a table. We had to pitch in front of the judges, but this time it was three minutes, and we got to have a PowerPoint. And then after that, we had to go to the public and do a, a, a public pitch. And then this is great, because now this wasn't from my year, but this is my friend Winston going like this. He's from the year prior. It literally was a nail-biting, jaw-dropping, 
moment. And that was me because I, with every, again, they only chose um, five teams. And so <laughs> with every name they called, I sunk lower and lower and lower into my seat. They're like 5,000. Okay, now the next team is 10 and then 15 and then 20 and then 25. And I'm, now mind you, I'm sitting next to the two people that I thought were gonna be first and second place. You just never know. And I'm like, well, I know I'm going home because that guy's gonna win. And no, I, it, they did it to me again. They called me last. So there we are. <laughs> um, these are all the winners. There, it was really interesting, you know, talking about sci, sci art business, but also um, some e-zines, um, video game company, an AR VR um, museum company, a lot of really interesting stuff. So, and then I just wanted to show you this. So this is my, the, right afterwards, my dad's like, let's go out and celebrate. Let's go to a Chinese restaurant. And I swear to God, that was my fortune. I'm not lying, I cannot make this up. So um, anyway, and of course, you know, gotta do your financial, you know, say I, every penny that I won, I put right to, to use the, the, as I had promised, you know, so you have to kind of, you can't just run away with money, you have to report it. And that is pretty much it. I got some, you know, good press, but the, the last question is what's next? So it's my last slide, I promise. Um, what am I doing now? This has been a really rewarding experience because I feel like um, many things came from this that I never would have expected. So um, the lesson here is that, you know, if you're thinking about doing something and you're hesitating, just do it. Because now in my department, I've been promoted to the assistant director of production. I'm teaching the business class now full time. Um, and I'm offering mentorship through the AMI. And um, in 2020, this has been put off for way too long, but I'm going to be writing a business column. So that's pretty much it. And thank you so much. <laughs>